Hey everyone! Remember when we were talking about the Japanese version and having to do new boss kills? There's probably a lot of people wondering, well, how do you figure out how to do new boss kills? This actually ties into like the worst question that I get asked about Mario 3 because it's it can be complicated, but at the same time, it's not complicated. And I want to explain to you guys today just exactly how the boss patterns work. So get excited because now you can finally fully understand what it means to get a good pattern, a bad pattern, and how all of us runners know exactly what pattern we're gonna get. Let's check it out. To get a good idea of a good boss pattern, it's normally when a speedrunner or player can get the 10 fireballs off on the boss quickly without having to stomp them twice or be thrown around. Let me show you a few examples of boss kills where I don't exactly know what pattern I'm going to get and let's see what happens. I swear, that was as authentic as it gets. What I did was I wasted a little bit of time on the overworld and a whole bunch of places to make sure that I got different patterns. And let me tell you, I had no idea the boss even did those things. The first one was horrible because I wanted the jump shoot and I jumped right into the Cheerios. The second one, he jumped right away and then he, th he threw me whenever I got like six or seven shots off. And then I jumped and he jumped at the same time and I took damage, it was ridiculous. The third one was okay. Um, I was able to get two shots off and then he kind of rushed me and after that it was okay But then launched me again, and I was all over the place, but I didn't lose my fire flower Let's actually compare the best of the worst one that I did with the world record and let's see what kind of time difference this is To lose three seconds like that, oof, that would be awful. Did you guys like my timing method better this time? I think I got it under control now, so we want, we're not gonna have any more problems with that in the future. What if the fire kill was worse than what I did there? What if I didn't even get it and I took damage? How much more time do you think it would be? I think it's very important that we get to work in understanding how the boss kills work. So let's get that started. Essentially, the boss pattern is determined by how long it takes you from the last level you finish to enter the pipe on the airship. Did you get all that? In the 100% run, it's very easy to track and practice boss patterns because you finish all hammer bros and you always move from a specific location aside from world 2 and 5. Let's use world 4 as an example again. This is what the boss pattern in 100% will look like, only if moving from the last fortress to the castle goes well. Let's remember this pattern. Shoot, jump, shoot, stomp, stand and go ham. Let's try and do this exact pattern, but mess up the movement from the last fortress and see if it changes. Okay, we made it. Let's see if messing up my overworld map movement changed the boss pattern at all. This was a fantastic example. So it turned out the boss almost did the exact same thing. My 100% setup would have still worked here, and it kind of did. But if you notice, this time the boss didn't stop and shoot. It just goes to show how little something can change the boss patterns. 
World 2 is the bulk of boss pattern problems. Here is a crash course of what can happen in World 2. Remember, the boss pattern is determined by how long it takes from the last level you completed till you enter the pipe on the airship. Let's use Warpless as an example now. If you beat the pyramid and the hammer bro gives you a movement of 2, well, that will take longer than if you got a movement of 1. This will change the boss pattern, forcing runners to learn two different patterns in Warpless depending on what happens. But it gets even crazier. Since you need the hammer item from World 2, if he moves around in a bad way and ends up between the castle and the pyramid when you're ready to do the pyramid, well then you'll be moving to the castle from after fighting the hammer bro and not the pyramid, again changing the pattern. Also, what if the hammer item is above the pyramid in the same situation? Then you'll have to move up one or two tiles above the pyramid, fight the hammer bro, and then from there move to the castle. That would be six extra map movements. But what if you do the same thing and you get a movement of one instead of a movement of two from this hammer brother or vice versa? This is why boss patterns can be such a pain. I just explained probably six to seven different patterns you'll face given the circumstances. If you thought it was over, <laughs> you're wrong. If you don't enter the pipe perfectly or take damage on the airship, well, that will also delay your time. Even getting a power up on the airship will change your boss pattern. Not all the time, but it can. Can you see why it's a complicated question? By far one of the worst questions I get asked, especially during stream. I don't get too upset, it's just I feel bad because I can't explain it properly. There's just so much behind the Hammer Brothers and the boss patterns that it's just way too complicated to explain on the spot, especially during a world record run. Most of the time when people ask, I just have to say, oh, you know, as soon as I beat the level and when I get to the pipe on the airship, that's what determines the pattern. And I can't explain it in full. Well, I hope you all enjoyed and I hope you learned something. Now let's do it on the Japanese version. Take it easy, everyone. See you later.